Hey, we're back with just the host. I'm Ryan. And I'm Dustin. And I'm Brennan. I got in. <laughs> For another episode of Flight Tales. Woo! Everybody got it. I yes. did one. <laughs> yes. And now for the runway report. The runway report. Yes. Runway report. Well, we have some radio issues with 752. That's a new one, isn't it? Yeah. That one started last week. Well, I, I got think. the plane filled up this morning because I thought it was going to Patterson. And then they told me I did that for nothing. So I was like, well, it's been full of fuel. It's full now <laughs> yeah. for when it's ready to go. <laughs> I think you were flying when we were kind of going through all that because uh, John had flown it yesterday and he said they went down to uh, New Iberia and on the way back, the radio, the tower couldn't hear him. So they had the handheld and uh, that's like seven miles. Yeah. And then once they got like uh, four or five miles, they could hear. So it's like slowly dying. The radio is slowly dying. Nice. <laughs> handheld. They always say that we come in good on the handheld, though. So, yeah. Well, that's good. That's we got a reliable handheld that we can use. <laughs> as long <laughs> we, as we charge the battery, we're good. We were in Garrett's plane today, and they he had this like, I was like, what is this? It was something underneath it though, and I was like, what is this? And he grabbed it. It's like one of those like old PA systems. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's like, installed the? in the plane? Yeah, like wire in it and everything. He was like, yeah, push the talk. And he clicks it, and sure enough, it's push the talk. Oh, my like God. Like a whole radio. Huh? Like you can hear it outside yeah. the plane? Uh, no. It's, so it's not an actual PA it's system? It's a radio. No, it's not an actual it's PA like system. It's like your backup radio. That would be radio. awesome, though. It's just the plane around you. It's yeah. like, it's 64752 coming in. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So we got to get that fixed. And I, I I think the plan is to go, uh, it's it's due for 100 hours, so we're going to take it for that. And then after that, take it to the radio shop. Handheld works fine. Yep. Yeah, handheld works good. The other issue after, I think it's in the GPS. Did we talk about that? No. That's what the radio guy said. It's uh, probably the, since we got the 650 and it's a all-in-one thing. The radio issue is because of the GPS? Well, the, the radio is part of the GPS. Yeah, it's all together. Yes, all together. So, we'd have <laughs> to send the GPS to... <laughs> To uh, Garmin for them to get it fixed, and then uh, but also the transponders in the GPS, so we wouldn't yeah. have a transponder either, which is not good because we're supposed to have a transponder in Lafayette. And hey, today's place. tip, yeah, <laughs> make sure your transponders on. <laughs> Start talking about transponders. <laughs> there you go. It's all in one unit, so you got to pull the whole unit out. You don't need the GPS though. Send it to the Garmin. You have your, you have your eyes. Yeah, yeah. You you can look outside. Dead reckoning in pilotage. That's right. So we really don't need the GPS, but we need the radio part of the GPS. Yeah, and the and the transponder part, which is yeah. all in the GPS. You made it a one stop shop. Yeah, when it messed up, that's right. You really screwed us. What's their warranty? Uh, well, it's out of warranty. That thing is like ten years old. So it's uh, we just. I got to pay for whatever is yeah, gotcha. wrong with it. Oh, what about all the metal and the oil? Oh, actually, I did find out some stuff yesterday. It hadn't been resolved yet, but the latest on that was uh, I called the uh, engine shop, and they said they got the cylinders, and they're going to look at them and see if they can do something with it. That's the latest on that, so that's all I know about that. Zero 09 Echo's instruments fully work now. They're IFR. Oh, yeah, yeah. We had that uh, looked at. The, we brought that to the radio I shop. I tested the ILS, and the ILS was perfect. And the ILS now works correctly. It was perfect. And, uh, yeah, so that's a fully functional IFR airplane now. Oh, how about that alternator? That alternator's been replaced. That was, yeah. Let's go. We had, <laughs> we had that We had that fixed, yeah. Uh, that was I mean, when I it, figured. But <laughs> that's, when it got, that's when it was stuck over there. There was a mechanic... <laughs> That <laughs> fixed it. We just we just spun the propeller and yeah, flew it back. we just you know we hand propped it and flew it back. That's what I and used doing. the handheld. You almost went so cagey. We hand propped it and flew it back. <laughs> we hand propped that thing, flew it back. <laughs> Any word back about the meetup? Uh, no, but I also did talk to one of the tower people about it, but he was like referred me to another tower person. I did something to Brant, and he was like, "That was the stupidest joke," but it was something mechanical, and then it brought up. In the Marines, like we used to tell people, send people around 
the to talk to other people to talk to other people for Humvees because we had a bunch of Humvees and they say we'd be like, hey, go get the keys. And they're like, oh, okay. So they go talk to somebody for the keys. He's like, oh, no, you got to go talk to Admin for that. He'd go to Admin. And, and they end like, up going back to the original person. Yeah, they <laughs> keep going back and they end up back at you. And like, hey, right, dog, they ain't got no keys. Yeah, yeah, I'll I got the keys. <laughs> no, there's no home. There's no key. That's the joke. <laughs> the so keys key. don't have keys. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, so. Let's get some pre-solo advice. Actually, I made some nice checklists to put in the planes. They had tabs. They were binded. It was all pretty and everything. And then and people ate them. Yes. Somebody took a bite out of one of the pages. This <laughs> yes. is why we can't have nice things. So then we went to just to one sheet, you know, yeah, laminated back. sheet. We can print off another one if it gets eaten again. <laughs> some planes are not. Some planes are in, in miles per hour. So like the point was to make a specific one for each plane that had the correct speeds for every single phase of flight for the plane that you were in. So that's why we made the papers real nice and fixed all the stuff that were kind of messed up. And then I made the iPad version. So for people that had iPads, I sent it to them through the iPad too. Yep. So, so they can use it, check their checklist off the iPad. Well, you get students too that all the time they're like, they're coming in to do their short field landing or something like that. And they're coming in at like, for short field, you're coming, you come in at 60 knots. And then they're coming in, they're coming in at 70 knots. I'm like, where are you supposed to be coming no, in? At? No, no. Yeah, I was like, what are you supposed to be coming in at? And they're like, 70? I was like, I don't know. Maybe you should look at your checklist. And then they go on and they're like, You just start oh. like casually saying, checklist, <laughs> checklist, <laughs> checklist, <laughs> checklist. <laughs> yeah. Because if you don't come in the right speed, you might end up on the trees. Like you do the uh, fuel valve, huh? To try to make sure people are doing their pre flight oh, checklist. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. one of your little tricks that he'll yeah. turn the fuel valve off and to see if people are thoroughly doing their pre flight checklist. It's like the first two things, the second line says, make sure your mixture's on both. And like all that happens is they're going to go to start the plane. It's going to start up and then they're going to start doing their checklist and going through the thing. And all of a sudden it's going to go. Yeah. And then they look, this is what they do every single time. <laughs> <laughs> they look at you like the plane messed up and then will will does it too and will was talking to me he's like i usually take he said he takes the checklist and then like when he knows it's about to shut off it'll shut off and he'll go yeah it was second on the list <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's good i gotta yeah, do that, yeah, that, that. <laughs> so what what is it it's your mixture. Uh, it's not a fuel your mixture, valve. your fuel valve. Yeah, your fuel valve. It what controls you so you can either get fuel from the left tank, the right tank, or from both. Or you can turn it off. Yeah. So, so then there's no fuel coming from either tank. So it's just trying to start without fuel. Yeah. 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 It'll start because it has fuel on the lines, but it won't ha it won't continue. Is there any chance that, that would cause a metal in the No. <laughs> no, that it's doesn't. Not like where Papa's down. I didn't fly it, I swear. <laughs> Brent's like, no. I never did that. That was Will every time. <laughs> Will was like metal Papa in the, the other thing I know I noticed that uh, like people will do is you know, I'll tell them to put the mixture in, you know, when they first learning to fly, and then at some point I stop telling them and I just sit there and watch and it's in the checklist before start checklist, mixture rich. And if they don't do it, same thing happens. The engine will start, run for a little while, and then cut off. So actually, that's better because then you're making sure they're actually doing their checklist pre-flight when you're not may not be out there yet. Probably the before landing and the descent checklist, they probably forget it the most yeah. other than that. Because there's so much going on. I do tell people this too for your checklist. Like when you get good enough at knowing everything, you're not going to have to look at the checklist for every single thing that you'll do. You'll run through it and look at everything. And then the checklist is to verify that you did everything. It's like but you still got to go through the checklist. If you ever go pick up a plane um, out of maintenance, Sometimes the mechanics move things. And so when you get in the plane that you fly regularly and you see a switch moved and, you know, you got to really do a thorough check, pre-flight check because of mechanics move stuff. And you got to think there's a different student getting in there every yeah. single time flying the plane before you. Who so knows what they did? Yeah, who knows what they did? And some do shut off the, you know, some are mm -hmm. were taught. Like, especially maybe somebody like who's a renter and may, it may not have learned here. Yeah. So they... 
learn at their other school to shut off the uh, fuel valve. I did have people that would set the parking brake. And here it's not a big deal because we always tow everything by hand. But they did actually. I just saw a video of someone that took a picture of like at an airport. It was a caravan. And he sent it to one of his. Yeah. He sent it to one of his pilot friends. He was like, what's this plane with the ceiling fan on the phone? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, some, I saw that too. Somebody said that. I, was I, was like, like, I am only referring to single prop engines as single uh, single fan engines yes. from now on. Ceil- ceiling fan engines. Ceiling, ceiling, fans. ceiling, yeah, ceiling fans. Ceiling fan engines. <laughs> so hey. the ceiling fan on the front does not go backwards. <laughs> no. You have to have brakes. Do you think a airboat would propel an airplane enough to fly? Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, the engine that's on there is the same that they put in airplanes. I didn't know that. It's a Lycoming engine. So are, it's you liter- talking about, are you so, talking about air seaplanes? Or are, air, he's air, talk- are you talking about an he's airboat? He's talking about an airboat. Yeah. Oh, a Cajun airboat. Yeah, like yeah, an Cajun, airboat. They put that's Lycoming what Ryan's engines talking about. Really? Ryan like big it. old fans? Yeah. Those are Lycoming engines. Yeah. Oh, geez, I didn't know that. They're lighter. So they're lighter than like loud. a regular engine. Oh. They're so loud. Yeah. That's insane. So you're telling me. <laughs> I could put wings on my air <laughs> No, 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 no. You're telling me uh, props don't spin backwards. Uh, they oh, ha, ha. It's spinning the same way. No, it's not. Don't spin backwards. It's behind you on an airboat. Oh, so, don't give and me the that. the engine's in front of Don't it. give me that. So if you were to turn <laughs> it around. It'd be the same rotation. No, it'd be pushing the plane backwards. I think the engine's going to rotate the same. Yeah, the prop may be backwards, but the engine's still going to turn the same way. Yeah. That makes more sense to me as to why you can't go in reverse, because you can't just flip a prop on an airplane. So this is what happens on a turboprop airplane. The in- So you have a reverse on like a King Air or a uh, Piaggio or whatever we're talking about, but the blades move back. It's not the engine's still turning the same direction. The The hub of the of the uh, prop is turning the same direction. The blades move so that the wind changes direction. So that's how the reverse works. So you're telling me <laughs> if I put wings on my airboat. So like even in the, uh, <laughs> there's fly. there's airplanes like the Piaggio had counter rotating props. So one prop turned one way and the other prop t- turned the opposite way. But there was a gearbox on it so that. To what made the other prop turn the other way. But if it didn't have the gearbox, they would both turn the same way. Oh, no. Yeah. This is too much. And this is this is a too, lot. Brennan's like, nope. Just this tell is me how to lot. fly the plane. Yeah. My head is hurting now. <laughs> I just want to fly to 172. <laughs> All that to be said, do your pre-flight checklist. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> People do be forgetting. <laughs> now time for some cockpit comedy. Cockpit comedy. Yeah. Here you go for your cockpit comedy. <laughs> I want to die in my sleep peacefully like my grandfather did, not screaming in terror like his passengers. Oof. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's rough. Oh, my God. Yes. That's, uh, oh. A passenger in panic asked if the airplane was going the right way, to which Yoda responded, of course we are. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> that was a good one. Was, uh, oh, of course we are. That was pretty good. Now time for today in aviation history. In 1879, Nellie Thurston was the first Canadian woman to fly in a balloon. Wow. That's cool. Is it? Yeah. That sounded like a question slash statement. That's of? cool. <laughs> that cool, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm just saying it's cool. It's speaking of women, in 1911. Mrs. A. Hewlett was the first British woman to get a pilot's license. Now that's cool. And now the final approach. So yeah, so we're gonna start. Uh, so we're gonna start doing this uh, every week, me and you. Nice. You? Yeah. Except for once a month, we're gonna do uh, one with a special guest. So hey, if anybody could comment, that'd be great. Who they would want? But uh, me and Brennan are gonna keep doing this. Yeah. He's so excited. <laughs> He's so excited. <laughs> he loves this so much. <laughs> Peyton's coming back for the next one. So uh, next month, we'll have Peyton talking about... Uh, everything. DPE stuff. Yeah, everything. So watch but it. But like what... If you're getting ready for a check ride, watch it. Yeah. Especially Good. if it's with him. There Good it is. tips. Watch Good it. tips. Life sales. 
If you made it this far, you listened to the entire episode. And for that, we would just like to say thank you, and we hope you enjoyed it. We would also like to thank Brennan Go for being my co-host today. If you have any questions about today's episode or suggestions for future episodes, just leave a comment or message us, and we'll do our best to answer. If you'd like to check out some fun aviation videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Owens Flight Training. Or if you'd like to get more information on becoming a safe, knowledgeable, and confident pilot, just head over to our website, owensflighttraining.com. 